What's going on, folks? This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. We're going to be closing it out today. Well, how about the market, right? We are up right now 1.21% in the SPY, the E mini 1.12% as well. Russell Futures still up today as well, 1.32%. NQs 1.29%. Composite up 1.4% as well. We're covering a little bit uh, from yesterday. And then, of course, the big story is Dow above uh, 40,000. So, I mean, quite a little fake out from yesterday, right? Where you had somewhat of a, you know, substantial shake off or sell off, at least in the composite. You some of these tech companies coming down. Let me just see. I don't even know what NVIDIA is at right now. Obviously, that came down a little bit. Yeah, we're up again right now. 3.35%. Tesla, obviously, gapped down. Didn't really gap down, but went down quite a bit yesterday. Uh, tested that, that 220 level. Excuse me, the, uh, the 240 level. And uh, bounced right back off it. And... Uh, we're up right now 3.93% in Tesla. Uh, so insane. I was thinking of at least adding some TSLS, which is directions uh, Tesla bear. Now, this is cool because it's a one-to-one. -one. You don't got to worry about other things that come with, like, you know, three times leverage, two times leverage ETFs. But, uh, yeah, I'm glad I did not add that. Anyways, let's see what up. The dollar still down in that trading range of 104.09. Of course, the Qs are up as well. Now, Lucid, man. What can you say about that, right? This is a weird thing for me, right? And it's a weird thing for me, too, because I took a position in Rivian a few days ago, which has been treating me well. Of course, not, you know, 24% in a single day after, you know, you had days of 3 to 4% increase as well. Uh, the first time I ever saw a Lucid was literally yesterday driving home from work. Uh, I've never seen one prior to that. I still think Lucid has a lot of problems with cash. I don't know how long they can stay going with the amount of cash that they do. That was a major concern with Rivian. Uh, but Rivian got, you know, that big cash injection from VW. And people are tending to like the R1s. They obviously beat on earnings in a big way. And, uh, yeah. But, I mean, anyways, if you were getting on that kind of meme role, and that's, you know, that's, that's some good volume as well, you know. Uh, so we'll see what happens, you know, essentially Monday. It kind of makes sense, I would say, that the spy didn't come down you know, so hard again today, you know, on the last day of the week. Um, so, you know, we might have a uh, interesting kind of time on Monday. You know, I still, I think in some way, you know, you kind of anticipate a pullback a little bit. Um, economic data was fine. You know, it was kind of good for the concept of, of bringing rates down in September. Um, but I still think, you know, I still think Powell's a little bit hesitant on it. You know, you still need a few more months to see on that. Anyways, uh, you know, we might just get a stall out at this level. It's hard to say at this point right now. I will also say as well, if you missed Tom's show yesterday, he had a really good interview with Tim Ord. Um, really recommend checking that out on our YouTube. You can kind of hear them both. I was listening to it the whole time. You know, speaking about the market in general, all the way into gold and that kind of stuff. And, uh, yeah. Before we move any further, I have to say, you know, I am the admin for a lot of the little events we have going on in the Tiger's Den. If you're not in the Tiger's Den, I strongly recommend getting in on it. You can just go to TFNN.com. I'm going to go ahead and pull this up here right now. Uh, you can go to services, and now this is just a massive trading room. Where is it? Right here. This is $1 a year, and we only do that just to make sure we know who's in there for security purposes, keep everyone uh, safe and just get a lot of trading and discussion going on. It is awesome. Uh, and when I get, you know, a day like yesterday happens where you get some, you know, volatility in the market, that's when I get excited. And I was just reading the den the whole day, and it was awesome. If you're new uh, to TFNN, strongly recommend checking that out. And, uh, however, this morning we had the other installment. Of, this is the first for this month. We'll have another one on the fourth Friday of Live Trading Fridays with Larry Pesavento. That was phenomenal. And again, we had that volatility yesterday. It was fantastic. And, you know, we, we've been doing this for a few months now. And Larry is just, you know, he gets on and we just get going. And it is a great time. Uh, if you want to check that out or any other kind of service or newsletter that we have, strongly recommend checking this out. This is the TFNN July Tiger Dollar Sale. You get bonuses, 20%, 30%, 40% on all your Tiger Dollars. And that goes to all of your purchases. Uh, and they never expire. Come on, it's a sweet, sweet deal. All right. Let's move uh, back into the markets. 
You had some stuff going on with the banks today, and I want to pull up. They had earnings, of course, um, but I just want to pull up a little uh, some of them, and we can go over it just a tad. If I can get my article. Obviously, let's look at Citibank just first, just get a chart up for it. We're down uh, pretty significantly. <laughs> I mean, it's only 0.93%, but still, um, yeah, not everyone uh, enjoyed it in such a way, right? So you had Wells Fargo, okay, they kind of lost a little bit. Let's see what JPM is looking at as well. Yeah, that is down. So you had Wells Fargo heading for the worst earnings day drop in more than three years. Uh, crazy. Citigroup slumped as expenses uh, were in focus. Even though its market's revenue beat expectations, J.P. Morgan sank uh, the most in a month after its results and steady guidance failed to impress. Uh, is killing part of the early uh, decline? Yeah, I mean, this is what I really think it is, right? You, you have kind of the valuation of this high interest rate structure already priced in with the banks, right? And why go into that when I can buy Lucid for four bucks on a share and then we see a 23.83%. You have a lot of these stocks kind of just waking up in a weird way. That for instinctually is giving me somewhat of a pause for whatever reason, um, just in the sense of like, why why now? Does the market, is everyone, can, can people not get into AI? Is this kind of the thing? And uh, that makes me a little bit nervous in some capacity, right? Because now you're just like saying, hey, we have so much capital still. Um, things like AMD, NVIDIA, everything's priced in. Uh, so what do we do next? Well, what is adjacent to AI or any kind of tech? And you're going to start looking at these uh, as well, as well as a few other stocks. So I don't know, a little bit uh, strange on that, but I, I, I kind of see that might be the major issue, at least going on uh, with the banks as well. And then, of course, you know, you have Tesla. We could talk about that a little bit just before the break. Up 4% again. Uh, just an insane thing. I mean, this is a rug pull here. This is what I talk about. When I say be careful if you're doing anything on Musk news, because he, uh, this is how he gets money in a major way. He rides these up a few days and then rug pulls it out. I mean, this idea of like an August showing for the robo taxi, I don't even think was true. I'm not even sure if we're going to see it in October. And he spoke today about improvements, um, the FSD, but then didn't really speak about robo taxi at all. Folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back.